Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, sent a congratulatory cable to the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Education Charitable Trust, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on the occasion of the decree appointing him Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Labor Fund Tamkeen. Her Royal Highness expressed pride in the appointment which stems from the confidence in His Highness's efforts and his ability to carry this important responsibility, in addition to the other tasks he undertakes in serving the nation and fulfilling the aspirations of its leaders and its people. Her Royal Highness extended her sincere congratulations and wishes to His Highness Sheikh Isa for further success in achieving these aspirations with Team Bahrain, which prioritizes the interests of the nation to continue the successes of the prosperous march in the kingdom. <coughs> the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, expressed thanks and appreciation to Morocco for hosting the 2023 annual meetings of the World Bank Group and the International Monetary Fund. He affirmed the important role played by the WBG in confronting various economic challenges in a way that contributes to achieving further development and growth for the benefit of the global economy, praising the WBG's new vision, aiming to reduce poverty at the global level and promote prosperity to achieve social development and environmental aspirations that benefit everyone. Sheikh Salman was speaking while delivering the statement of the Arab group and the Maldives, represented by the Kingdom of Bahrain, at the Joint Ministerial Committee of the Boards of Governors of the Bank and the Fund on the Transfer of Real Resources to Developing Countries, the Development Committee held as part of the 2023 Annual Meetings of the World Banking Group and the IMF in Marrakesh, Morocco. The Minister highlighted the WBG's role in finding solutions to the challenges facing the food and energy sectors by enabling digital capabilities, protecting environmental diversity and nature, and accelerating global economic recovery. He welcomed the increase in the WBG's financing capacity to meet development needs in a way that supports countries' efforts to achieve sustainable development goals. He stressed the importance of finding innovative solutions that support the economic development process through optimal exploitation of available resources and developing human capital, in addition to stimulating private sector investments and providing appropriate financing for them, as well as a legislative environment that stimulates growth. He called for strengthening cooperation among the public and private sectors, multilateral development banks, other international organizations and civil society entities to support programs and initiatives that contribute to achieving an appropriate response to various challenges, including climate change. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowment, Nawaf bin Mohammed Al Maouda, participated in the 33rd meeting of the Ministers of Justice of the Gulf Cooperation Council countries. The meeting reviewed the draft agreement on the extradition of accused persons in the GCC countries and the project to develop the agreement on the enforcement of judgments, judicial cooperation, and service in the GCC countries. The ministers discussed Oman's initiative to enhance judicial integration among the GCC countries, in addition to topics of mutual interest. The ministers also issued several recommendations to be submitted to the Supreme Council in its next session. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, held a meeting with the Chairman of the Nazarbayev Center for Development of Interfaith and Intercivilization Dialogue, Sarsen Bayev Bulat Segarazovic, on the sideline of the 21st session of the Secretariat of the Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions, held in Asatana in Kazakhstan. Dr. Sheikh Abdullah affirmed that the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence reflects His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's enlightened vision regarding the protection of religious freedoms and the dissemination of the values of tolerance and moderation towards a more peaceful, secure and prosperous world, highlighting the positive role played by the King Hamad Global Center for 
peaceful coexistence as a global institution for defending human values without the discrimination and demonstrating the essence of the principles of moderation and human fraternity. For his part, Sarsen Baev Bulad Saragazovich voiced appreciation for the qualitative initiatives launched by the Kingdom of Bahrain in the field of dialogue and rapprochement among religions and cultures, noting that Bahrain represents a pioneering global model for tolerance and human fraternity. The meeting discussed ways to enhance partnership between the two centers by exchanging expertise and experiences, launching innovative programs and projects, as well as developing endeavors aimed at consolidating the culture of peace and coexistence in a way that would contribute to achieving common goals. As the second session of the sixth legislative term for the Shura and the Representative Councils commences, the two councils look forward to achieving further national accomplishments that serve the interests of the nation and its citizens. Under the leadership of His Majesty the King, and guided by the sincere national determination, the Kingdom of Bahrain continues to make remarkable strides and contributions within the framework of upholding the rule of law and strengthening its institutional foundations. As the second session of the sixth legislative term for the Shura and Representative Councils commences, efforts persist to solidify the principles of democratic process and to achieve further developmental gains that serve the interests of the nation and its citizens. And with the unwavering support of His Majesty the King, the Legislative Authority remains committed to attaining significant milestones that have thrived under His Majesty's keen guidance, driving the nation towards continuous progress, development and prosperity. And through the distinguished efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, the upcoming phase of national endeavours will emphasise on fostering constructive cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities to realise desired goals across various domains. The royal address delivered by His Majesty the King will serve as a comprehensive roadmap outlining the key priorities for national work in the upcoming phase, inspiring sincere dedication and determination to sustain the achievements made in Bahrain's journey of comprehensive development. The Kingdom of Bahrain stands out for its robust digital infrastructure in the telecommunications, information technology and digital transformation sectors. This has positioned it as a leading nation in the region and the world in terms of leveraging advanced digital technologies. More details on this report. Guided by the directives of His Majesty the King and supported by the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Bahrain has embarked on a transformative journey harnessing modern technology for the betterment of its citizens' lives and the provision of a decent standard of living. In its work program for the years 2023 to 2026, the government has prioritized enhancing performance and delivering improved services to its people, with a focus on government performance and digital transformation, driving the integration of digital services and transactions across ministries and government entities. Bahrain has emerged as a frontrunner in the realm of digital evolution and transformation. Its pioneering spirit is evident in the comprehensive revamp of services and electronic systems, resulting in an impressive utilization rate of 90%. In recognizing the significance of cybersecurity and information security, Bahrain has made them integral components of its comprehensive security framework, safeguarding vital and strategic interests. As Bahrain embarks on its ambitious five-year national strategy for the digital economy, it establishes itself as a beacon of forward thinking and innovation. And with a clear vision for the future, leveraging the power of digital advancements, Bahrain is positioned to unlock new opportunities, drive economic growth, and forge a prosperous path for its people. Fintech Forward 2023, organized by Bahrain Fintech Bay, has successfully concluded in Bahrain. The event was held under the patronage of the Central Bank of Bahrain and in strategic partnership with the Bahrain Economic Development Board. More details in this report.
Bahrain Raid Extreme. BRX drivers Sebastian Loeb and Orly Terranova played it safe in the Rally du Maroc today as the final round of this year's World Rally Raid Championship got underway. The two BRX drivers are both attempting to secure a second successive victory in the event for the Pro Drive Hunter and they were happy to play supporting roles as Swede Matthias Ekström set the fastest time on the 19-kilometer Prologue from Audi teammate Stefani Peter Hansel, with Terranova and new Argentine co-driver Bernardo Graui taking 10th spot on the day. BRX teammate Slob and Fabian Lurkin were 11th quickest on the stage in their Pro Drive Hunter. The restrained nature of the Prologue was highlighted by the fact that Qatar's Nasser Al Atiyah finished the day in 21st position ahead of five tough desert stages that will decide the rally and championship outcomes. Third on the day in the, his Toyota, Saudi Arabia's Yazid Al Rajhi is the only driver who can prevent Al Atiyah from retaining the W2 RC driver's title. To do that, he must win the rally outright and finish near the top in every individual stage over the next five days.